Hello and welcome. This is Fede Gamans from Software for Chemistry and Materials. I'll be showing a few tips and tricks on how you can build periodic systems, slice surfaces and put molecules on top of those surfaces. I'll be using our 2020 version which will be released later this year uh, which contains a few new features which are useful for molecules and surfaces so let us know if you want to try it out. If you've opened an input window, it's called AMS input in 2020, by default you will see our molecular DFT code ADF and you will see building tools for molecular systems. So if you want to start building periodic structures, I will show three different ways on, on how to do that. Uh, the first one is just importing a SIF file. So if I have a SIF file, I can just import that or I can copy and paste it into my input window. So this is a SIF file from the materials project and then we can see in this case we've got zinc oxide word site structure. It will just copy the coordinates and the letters parameters into your input window. Another option is to search in our structure database and so using the search functionality we could type zinc oxide you will find two structures, so one is the zinc blend cubic structure and the other one is the word site structure. So if I were to click on that one and now it's obviously interspersed with the other molecule, so the other periodic system, so you'll see it's just a mirror image of that one uh, with slightly different lattice parameters. So those are two options and then finally if we just do new and I don't change the, uh, I don't save the changes. I have a fresh lettuce, so by default it's a cubic lettuce, and I can start building uh, from the space group. So first I choose the Laver lettuce, so hexagonal, and then choose the word site space group. And from there you will find a preset drop down window, and there you can see quite a few uh, crystals are available there, so zinc oxide. Will give me these lattice parameters here. Usually they're taken from uh, an old book on solid state chemistry. So if I click OK, it will ask me to map the atoms to the unit cell. Uh, so we'll stick it inside the unit cell and usually these unit cells are the primitive cells. So if we want to slice surfaces it's advisable to see if we can convert this um, into the conventional cell. So on the added crystal primitive to conventional cell it will see if it can find the transformation and then yes it will do it for you. So now we have the conventional representation of zinc oxide and we can start creating surfaces. There's a slicer tool available here so that's this icon or we can go edit crystal generate slab and by default it will go through the first atom in the unit cell so um, in this case we're slicing it z a 1, 0, 1 surface it will terminate at this uh, zinc atom but if we wanted to have it terminate at the oxygen atom then it will select that atom here okay so let's generate a two layer slab in this case generate slab and since by default it will find the next module it will go to band our periodic density functional theory code using atomic orbitals so that can deal with 2D periodicity if you wanted to use a graphical interface and even run quantum espresso within AMS that's also a possibility there's also an AMS interface to VASP as well there's a plane wave codes and plane wave codes always operate in 3D period boundary conditions. So it will manufacture for you the lattice vector in the C direction, the Z direction again, and by default, as you can see, it takes 10 times the largest uh, lattice vector of the, the, the other two. So this might be a slightly too large vacuum gap, so if you wanted to modify that, you could do that on the model lattice, right? So let me also demonstrate this icon here. This is a periodic display, and so by default you get a 3x3x3 three by three by three representation of your system, uh, but you can fine-tune that by changing the periodic range if you right-click on that. 
Okay, so uh, for 3D code, then you need to think about, of course, how much is the vacuum uh, between the, the gaps. You may want to converge with respect to that with bands or our DFTB codes. That's not necessary because we can switch the periodicity back from 3D or bulk to slab or 2D. And then we just have periodic boundary conditions in the X and Y direction. Okay, now let's say we want to put a molecule on top of this surface. Let's say water. There's a couple of options. So one is we search again, so we can search for water. And here we can find the X, Y, Z coordinates for water, which have been optimized with ADF at specific settings. And by default, that molecule will still be selected, which means that I can right click it to move it around, translate it or left click to rotate. Good. That's one option. The other option is, is that you just build it from scratch. So let me delete this molecule and use the atomic building tools. So I put an oxygen atom here and whilst it's still selected I can press Ctrl E to add hydrogen atoms and voila we have another water molecule. So an option could be to import a smile spring, import XYZ, or just build a new molecule in a different input window. So here in ADF I can build water and I can even pre-optimize it. And by default that uses a force field so uh, maybe I actually want to optimize it with GFNXDB and it does a DFTB optimization, a uh, quick pre-optimization and once that is done I can then just press Ctrl A to select everything, Ctrl C to copy and go back to this input window and Ctrl V to paste it. Again right click to move it around, left click to rotate it. Let's delete this other water molecule here. So Ctrl M selects the molecule if you've selected just one atom. So those are a few tips and tricks you can use to manipulate the uh, molecule, uh, insert new molecules. If you want to fine tune it a little bit more, you can select these atoms here. We can go to model coordinates. And we could also by hand change the Cartesian coordinates. So by default the coordinates are in Cartesian, so you can use fractional coordinates if you wanted to as well. Um, so one note on fractional and Cartesian coordinates. If you go to model letters, if you were to change the letters vector, so for instance if we were to stretch the B direction here, then by default the atoms will just stay at our at their Cartesian position. So if you want to stretch them along whilst you're stretching a letters, then you can tick this box here, adjust atoms when changing letters vectors. Now I want to demonstrate a new feature in 2020. Again, this will be released later this year. It's available on the Edit Tune Geometry. And it allows us to have a little bit more fine-grained um, let's say control over how we want to orient molecules and the order of the atoms is, is important here so we'll get to that later. So we have selected atoms 1, 2 and 3. If we can click on here then these will be the atoms that move and uh, let's say I want to put them above this zinc atom here. So if I now select here above atoms and then just the zinc atom, if I move it then these atoms will be moved exactly on top of this zinc atom here. And I could use, if I select those two atoms also, this tool to slide them. And as you can see, by default, it will move the second atom which is selected. So that's another tool to manipulate the geometry here. Um, if I wanted to orient let's say the water molecule in a flat or upright position then if I select those atoms again I could use the orientation tools here so this is perpendicular and this is parallel to the surface um, and in this case it will use these atoms here so 
Uh, if I don't select anything, then it will use the XY plane, so I can orient it perpendicular or parallel to the surface. And uh, depending on how you select these atoms, you have a little bit more fine um, control on, on how you orient this molecule here. Good, so this, these are upcoming features, we're still working on that, um, but it will allow you eventually to get a little bit more control on how to put molecules on top of surfaces. So let us know if you're interested in that. Then, as a final part of this demonstration, let's move to DFTB. Um, so DFTB is a fast approximation to density functional theory, so it uses parameterization as well as uh, a couple of approximations, so tight binding approximations, nearest neighbor, minimal basis. Uh, let's say we want to optimize um, this system, but we want to keep the bottom layers fixed. So we can use shift left click to select those atoms, and then we can go, if we have geometry optimization selected, to model geometry constraints and pest scan. If we click on those selected atoms, those atoms will be fixed during the geometry optimization. So, um, probably take a little bit too long whilst I'm recording this video, but we could save this as water on zinc oxide 101. And we could run that. Okay, so let's have a look at how the optimization went. So we go to SCM movie. And we can see it's taken quite a large number of steps, a little over a hundred. So we're far off from the equilibrium position. We can change here the y-axis from h tree to perhaps keep k calc more. And so we can see it's come quite a long way down here, um, and until it ultimately reaches deep convergence. And so we can see that indeed the bottom layer is, is kept fixed and top layer is expanded a little bit. I don't know how well the XTB actually does for, for zinc oxide. Uh, we can see the oxygen atom uh, of the water molecule sinking in a little bit closer to the surface, of course forming hydrogen bonds and the oxygen uh, interacting with the zinc oxide in the next unit cell. So we can switch that on as well, repeat unit cells. So there you can see there's an interaction between that oxygen atom and the zinc atom in the next unit cell. Okay, good. Uh, hopefully these tips and tricks are useful for you. Do let us know if you have any questions, comments, suggestions in terms of building periodic structures, creating surfaces and putting molecules on top of them. And also if you have any other suggestions for future video demonstrations. Thank you for watching. This was Feder Gaumans from Software for Chemistry.